Processing wid and squid. Uh, this is a topic close to our hearts here. So I hope you've got some nice things to say. Fire away. I'll try and keep to 20 minutes, thank you. I shall try. Uh, and, I, uh, and entirely relevant to the uh, time thing is to point out that this is a, a very long paper, I'm afraid. Uh, and uh, I'm only going to give you some of it today, but I hope the long version will be available very, very soon. I should also point out that uh, until I had been uh, asked to do this exercise, I'd never used WID or SWID. Um, so I'm actually a data monkey, but I, I've both uh, analysed a lot of data, and I've been a data producer of uh, panel survey income data. So I have, have an interest in this, but not using secondary income bases. But you can tell where I'm coming from. The bottom line is going to be echoing Tony's three points that he made before about data, or in one line, the, the, the message is that data matter. So I have two sources, the WID and the SWID, um, which are secondary data compilations, primarily Gini coefficients, and I'm only going to talk about Gini coefficients today, but there, are, there is other information in those sources as well. The second thing, of course, is that these are very widely used, particularly the WID, because that's been around the longest, and it's been out in several versions, and going back to its ancestor, the Dining and Squire data set that came out from the World Bank. And at SWID is a new kid on the block, but is doing uh, quite well. Obviously, we heard from Andrew Berg this morning about a paper that is based on uh, the SWID, uh, the last version of the SWID before the one that I'm talking about. So I'm talking about WID2C, which was the most recently uh, available version of the WID until yesterday. Uh, I'm not updating my paper. Um, and there is the SWID, which uh, dates from late last year. Uh, so put out by Ewan U. Wider and Frederick Salt. So basically, uh, SWID is WID plus some extras, and, and Nora gave you some things about that. They are great. People like them because they, have, they cover a lot of countries, and you can see it's around 170 countries in both cases. They cover a lot of years. Uh, WID goes back furthest. Um, and Ben Swid goes forward a bit more because he started later and has, has had the chance to op operate some more, but he has a 1980 cutoff. WID is, uh, has got four quality ratings, so things rate from one very good down to two and three down to thin four, don't know. Uh, whereas uh, quality ratings are not really used in SWID at all, except maybe for the 1980 cutoff, in the sense you might argue that the past is something we don't know about so much. Uh, one thing you'll find out immediately using WID is that there are genies that are based on a huge number of different definitions and sources, and I'm going to come back to that issue a lot uh, in what I'm going to say. On the other hand, you put up the SWID, fantastic guys, there's just one genie, or, or several, one for net income, uh, and it's standardized on a list definition, so the standard list definitions that Marcus will probably remind us about later. There is the net income genie, there's a gross income genie, and the difference between them is redistribution. Um, I'm only going to be talking about net income genies today because there's quite enough to say about those. Uh, if you use uh, the WID, you'll f one of the problems you'll str set immediately find is there are lots of gaps in terms of countries in years. Uh, and that, that might be a problem for you if you want to address particular issues. So, SWID may seem an amazing bonus to you. Why? The gaps are all filled in, folks. There are no missing country year observations. Basically, what uh, is done is that, uh, as uh, Nora has hinted, there is a multiple imputation model that is used to fill in the gaps. And as, as Nora reminded you, every number in the SWID is made up using an imputation model. And I'm going to come back to that. Uh, in fact, so uh, with the multiple imputation, there are, uh, uh, in the main file, there are 100 multiple imputation values for the genie, and there is a summary file which contains the mean of the imputations. And I might also show you that, that later. And so people in the previous versions mm, pretty much all the time have ignored the multiple imputation aspect of the data, the imputation variability, and focused on effectively the mean values. So I, I've talked about the uh, advantages and disadvantages. Um, in the paper, I, I just basically assume that you know all the advantages. I also talk a lot about file content and documentation. I'm not going to talk about that at all today. But basically, I'm going to focus on potential disadvantages, problems, illustrate them, and suggest what you might do, make recommendations. 
And because Tony's going to be pushing me for time, I'm going to give you my conclusions first and uh, work, <laughs> work on from there. So the first thing, we, we, we've been in this place before. Atkinson and Brandolini, uh, in a couple of very good papers, have uh, reviewed the WID predecessor, the Dining and Squire data set, and all the issues that they raised there about comparability and data quality. I mean, basically, the first task I set myself was to say, are these, have these issues gone away with more modern data sets? And I'm afraid the answer is no, that the issues remain very relevant. Uh, I've got two conclusions for uh, WID users that um, people must report the details of their country year selection algorithms and justify the choices that they made. There is an amazing number of papers out there where it's very difficult to find out how people have chosen the observations. And I'm going to show you that's actually very important to do. Secondly, people do actually acknowledge most of the time that there are these non-comparability problems. And uh, a lot of the time they use something called a dummy variable adjustment process which uh, I'm, I'll talk about a bit later on. But basically, it's too simple, and people need to get wise up and use more sophisticated approaches. The SWID. Uh, well, I'm afraid uh, I'm going to disappoint the IMF, or I'm basically going to suggest that they should uh, rethink their strategy. Um, my headline conclusion for the SWID is that it provides plausible data, but not sufficiently credible data, unquote. Uh, there are two things you could think about. One is basically about the point estimates, bias in other words, uh, and that's driven essentially by the imputation model, and that's where I've got my main concerns. The other aspect of it, rather interestingly, the precision issue, that is if you ignore the multiple imputation nature of the data the, uh, when you derive your estimates, um, that doesn't screw things up very much, which is pretty amazing, really, but that's how it seems to me. So overall, I'm, I recommend uh, the WID rather than the SWID, but that support is very conditional, and it refers back to points two and three, which are major points. Um, we've already heard a lot in um, the talks about where we can get differences across data sets and non-comparabilities, issues of data quality. I've summarized them on the left-hand side in terms of differences of distributions, and on the right-hand side in terms of differences in data sources and sorts of adjustments that people might make. Um, so, for example, in the resource measure, income, blah, 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 a big difference that will come up is the difference between gross income or market income and net income. But there are the, all these other headings. Another thing to know about, of course, is that, I mean, the WID provides a series of variables which help you identify the differences on these various definitions. What that also means is that you can take different combinations and work out how many data potential data series you have. And the answer is a lot, as I shall show you. But for the first thing we have to remind ourselves about all this is a real trade-off problem, and that is between quality and coverage. A lot of people coming into this area basically want to have global coverage. Uh, uh, but the headline message is here, uh, and we've heard it already today, is that the more global you want your coverage, the greater the prevalence of poorer quality data that are included. So I've extracted a table from uh, the paper that has, across the top, time periods on the vertical, uh, on the vertical axis and in rows is uh, regions of the world. Um, and the difference between the top and the bottom panel is that the top contains all the observations that are in WID, and the one at the bottom is just focusing on the good quality observations, the quality equals one. And the first thing you'd note in the, the top is that all cells of the matrix pretty much are populated, and boy, there are a lot of numbers. However, if you go to the second panel, you immediately note that there's a substantial drop in the number of opportunities observations. So that means if you work with the top, you're including a lot of poorer quality observations. Moreover, that, uh, that uh, selection is very selective. Look where the, the, the entries are co concentrated for in the bottom half of the table. Basically, you start losing all the observations for Africa. Uh, you lose for pretty much you know, a lot of um, developing countries, which might be the ones you're interested in. So that is a trade-off conundrum, if you will, that has to be faced up. And I don't think any matter of adjustment can get around this issue, but it needs to be thought about a bit more. Um, so this multiple data series thing. So my headline conclusion, remember, was we need to know about algorithms. 
I didn't know about these data at all before I started in this, so I, I, but I know about UK data. So I looked at the WID for the UK. That's the 99 observations on the left-hand side. Time on the, on the horizontal axis, Gini coefficients on the vertical axis. Each dot is one of the observations. The black uh, diamonds are the quality equals one, and the hollow ones are the quality, the other ones. And basically, you see that uh, we get this concentration issue. And moreover, there are a lot of black dots um, over this. But moreover, for each of the different years, you can still find repeated observations per cell. OK, just to ram that home, let's go to Finland. Why should we go to Finland rather than the fact that we're just, we are here, of course? Um, is that my, part of my point is that these are countries where it's typically thought that the quality of the income series over time is relatively high quality. So we could, you know, so if things, we've got problems here, we're pretty much going to have problems any other country. So if we just focus for Finland on the quality equals one observations, we tidy up some of the variable names in WID and do things like that, we can still come up with four times three plus one is 13 different series. Okay? This is just out of the WID. So which one do we choose? We need to know, and quite often, folks, we don't know. And so at each, you know, any given year here, well, although you tend to see a sort of U shape there, you'll get different views about, precise picture about levels and about trends. What about comparing with external benchmarks? Well, this has been a theme already in many of the talks. Have things changed very much? The answer is, well, things have got better since the uh, atkinson brandolini JL article. But even then there are some quite marked differences that exist. So here, this picture shows focusing on one year, around 2000, where I'm comparing WID observations with observations that come out from the Eurostat uh, online database and from the list's uh, key figures. And here, we're all restricting ourselves to observations that are essentially the same as the list key figures one. So it's all pretty homogenous, supposedly, in terms of definitions. And, of course, that restricts the number of countries if we want to have three observations. But if you look at the, the heights of the different bars for, 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 for these uh, European countries, you can see that there are some quite large differences in terms of percentage points. You know, if we take two percentage points in the Gini, it's quite a large change. Most countries don't change by that much every year. You can see we get differences of up to 4 to 5% in some years. So even then, you know, there are differences. And, and t if you were to use the different series, it would change rankings and so on. What about a developing country? Well, this is China in the WID. And this is, uh, even if you're focusing on the observations where uh, we're not taking account of the differences between rural and urban and so on. This is just focusing on the whole country, everybody, we have this quality coverage conundrum even within this country. So if you want to look at a long time series of inequality that includes China, then, folks, you have to go down to quality equals three rather than quality equals two. That is the triangles rather than the squares. Okay, so that gives us the series with the, the funny drop down here, which you wonder what's going on. Moreover, this ob point about having mul multiple observations per year, even when the, um, the WID definition su suggests that you've got exactly the same income definition, you get really big differences. Look at 1995. Huge difference in the genies that are going on here. Um, and uh, even if you focus more and more on observations that are, um, have got even more consistently divine observations. So these are the ones that are filled in rather than hollow, and there's a few of them around in these pictures. Then you still get big differences. 1995, here you've got some oddities, and so on. So there are big differences. And if you pick up um, an article, for example, by these guys, who uh, I quite like the article in many ways, but they also do some benchmarking against WID, and their picture looks quite different from mine. I have no idea why. OK, so that's WID. What about the SWID? OK, so in the SWID, um, how is it generated? Remember, the, the key thing is that all the observations are imputed. And the idea is to use an imputation model. Um, so first of all, the selections and ex exclusions, as I said, focus on um, the pre get rid of the pre-1960 WID observations and so on. Then, OK, here's the... The imputation procedure, it is really complicated. So um, there are pages in my paper about the, the, the details because the details are very important. But the, the, the idea is actually very simple. 
So let's just suppose we have two data series for the Gini coefficient for a large number of country year observations. One is based on, based on gross income, or market income, if you will, or just let's call it gross income, and the other one is on net income, but the problem is that some of the estimates are missing for the net income genie. So what you do, your identifying assumption is the following. You assume that the ratio of the genie for net income to gross income is constant, the same, common to all countries within a particular group of country year observations. So that, that provides you with uh, donors, if you will, and that gives you an estimate of that ratio. Call it RG. And then basically, given that ratio, you go to the missing folks in the cell, multiply the value that you do have, bind the ratio, and out comes your number. That's an imputation. It's much more complicated than this. It's regression-based. There are more than 20 different data types, it, uh, so many different series. Lots of different definitions of groups, and they're rather unclear. Uh, various other steps, including smoothing. And as a bonus, uh, SALT also provides share of the richest 1% in uh, top income database sense. There's a basic problem, though, with this imputation idea about this constancy within groups of observations. Um, and by the way, it is just a multiplicative version of the dummy variable adjustment method that people use. There's basically, I, I would argue, that there are two competing the demands that can't be met. Basically, you have to group observations in order to have donors, okay, to provide the values that are going to be imputed to the missing observations. And of course, you want the groups to be as big as possible so that you get a reliable estimate within the cell. Okay, and well, to have some observations after all. But then, of course, you need lots of, um, as, lots of groups as possible to take account of the acknowledged variation in the difference between the genies for the ratio of gross income, to, uh, gross income to net income. But the trouble is that if you have more and more groups, that means the average group size, the number of countries, goes down, country and country years. So in the limit, you have no donors. So is this sort of problem, you know, um, and uh, yeah, so basically I don't think you can um, solve the problem given the, the data that are available. I don't, I don't think it can actually be met satisfactorily in, in practice. So the assumption that's basically built into WID is, uh, SWID is likely compromised. Uh, so I don't think WID users should, however, smirk. Um, the fact that there is this non-constancy reminds us that WID users who work in terms of genie differences with their regression adjustments need to look out and they need to be much more sophisticated than they have done in the past. So it's a, a judgment call on both groups. I understand, Tony. Okay, there are other issues with the uh, SWID's imputations uh, that I don't like. Uh, imputations of smoothing, definition of the series. There is a genuine bug in the computer c code for the share of the top 1% uh, series. So simply don't use these data. And uh, it's unfortunate that um, Salt, who knows about the bug, has not advertised it. Um, on the other hand, do applaud the fact that he provides replication material. I'm going to show you some um, evidence from the SWID to explain or show you the sorts of things that you get out of it. So this is for a net income genie. Um, so how can you benchmark the SWID? Well, you can try and do this benchmarking exercise again and see if where, for, for situations where you think you've got good data, what does the SWID show you for it? So the sort of thing you would get is, so here's genie, here's time. These dots here, the dark dots with the squares, are the means of the 100 imputations for each year. So for people who have not taken account of imputation variability in the past, think IMF, um, those are the numbers that are used in their regressions. Okay. Now, the, uh, and there are good re probably reasons why they didn't, because in the previous version of SWID, the multiple imputation bit was not as easy to use as it is in this later version. Okay, the gray dots are, summarize the imputation vari uh, variability in this. So the whole, this is all the range of the imputations. That's 100 gray dots in each year. I much prefer to show it this way. SALT refers to... Um, uh, confidence intervals, that to me is inappropriate language because they're not confidence intervals based on standard errors in the sampling variability sense. The, these are different. Okay, so that you can see the series here uh, for Finland. Um, it's benchmarked against list key figures. Um, 
What do you note here is that here we're going before the WID series, so this is where we're drawing on the imputation bit, drawing um, information from across countries and years elsewhere, and it's, well, reassuring that the imputation variability is a lot larger. If we look at the other end of the series, again, we're pushing out, and uh, here we have the, the SWID um, imputations, but here he's not even online with the list key figures. What's going on here, uh, and the, differ the difference, I'm going to finish, Tony, like Francois finished, and uh, the difference is here is that these list two, two list key figures were not available to SALT when he generated the data, so he wasn't able to standardize his series. But, however, his out-of-sample prediction is a bit way of the, uh, out of the mark. The other thing is that in previous years, the uh, levels and trends are also different. So if you think about throwing these numbers into a regression model, the numbers and the patterns, the relativities compared to different countries, different time periods, are different, and that's going to affect estimates. Uh, if you do this for the UK, you get a similar message. I've suppressed the uh, imputation variability in these pictures. These numbers are the official income statistics in Britain. The only difference between them is a, a change in the equivalent scale. The, so the series march together in parallel, virtually the same. The SWID gives a rather different picture, and I don't believe the SWID story. Um, China and Kenya. Okay, so you might have been quite impressed by the relatively narrow range of imputation variability in the SWID that came up from those earlier pictures. This is China, earlier years. Look at Kenya here. Look at the range on this picture, by the way, from a uh, genie of 20% uh, through up to 90%. So you can get huge imputation variability in some countries. And so the more that countries like this are put into your imputation model, it's going to have a, an effect on your estimates. And moreover, uh, there are differences in levels and trends to the extent that you can trust the WID observations in these two. Because remember, when you move into the developing countries, you're moving down the, down the quality scale. But um, interestingly, for example, for um, <coughs> China, this is the, the, WID, uh, the SWID uh, estimates here correspond to the trend that's show, shown in official statistics. But in fact, if you go back to the Xi and Zhu article that I was referring to before, the PNAS one, a nice part of that article is working with recent household surveys and suggesting that the trend is, in fact, better represented by where the WID one is pointing, which is, which is further up. So the final part of the paper is to do a series of regression illustrations to investigate the, extent, the sorts of things that are going on. Um, and I've taken an illustrative example based on the blind Isaki type of literature about the relationship between inequality and several other things, a macroeconomic approach and done some benchmarking, substituting in uh, other good quality information when we have it and see whether it makes a difference. The bottom line is it does make a difference. Part of that is because you're focusing on a homogenous set of countries, but once you get to a homogenous set of countries, you might as well not use the other sources. Um, the other thing is that... Uh, partly with the SWID in the regressions, Nora wants an answer to a question. Can you still use them in the regressions? We cannot tell because, by definition, for a lot of the other countries, we don't have an be external benchmark reference point. The observations are missing. On the other hand, given the benchmarking that we can do against good quality series over time and year, you've heard what I said. But also, if we look at precision... If you simply ignore the multiple imputation variability, interestingly, if you take um, proper account of it using, for example, the MI estimation suite and stata, then you get the same answers. So, you know, the issue to me is potential bias, not precision. Uh, so I've come to the end, and there are the conclusions again. Thank you very much. <laughs>